the duck the the um, the kick not there but there Anyway, your ears are your best friends. Don't be too stuck in graphics like I was just doing. <laughs> just listen to it and do, do what, I was, I was, what I was talking about. Got your low bass there and start raising your kick. I'm just going to meet the microphone and do this with that. So as you can see, you have more control. You got your kick, your bass, or your low bass frequencies, and your high bass frequency. This is very, very helpful in most cases. So that's it for kick and bass, really. I'm happy with that. But basically, that's it. It's having two copies of the same bass. One where you control the low end, one where you control the high. Imagine you and yes, of course, one and the kick drum. Place it in between the two harmonics, like I've showed you. Uh, so he has his own space in the spectrum, and it doesn't clash with the low frequencies and the of the bass, and doesn't create that horrible rumble that makes the track uncontrollable. So you have this clean uh, kick and bass. Of course, if you if imagine your your bass has a lot of release and uh, you want to fix that in the mix, you can always come to your low and gate it before you EQ it. Gate your low end bass, or you can even side chain. I can show you that just now. Uh, actually, I'm going to show you that just now. You can side chain it, and that's it's what you're quite easy do on Cubase. Uh, what it does is when the kick is played, the bass ducks. Uh, so we want to apply a compressor. Go into dynamics, go into compressor, and activate its side chain. So it's going to compress the low end because we got to separate it. It's just the low end is going to compress to avoid rumble and all that. Of course, I've done all that EQ and I have my, my bass really short notes on my bass really short decay and short release. So I don't have to do this. I don't usually do this. I'm just showing it for uh, the tutorial purposes. And I, I come here to my kick and I go to my sense of my kick. And I select side chains, it's now available, and you see bass low compressor. I'll select that, activate it, put it on zero and post uh, pre fade. Now I go to my compressor. Let's see what it does. Very short attack, short release, no hold. Maybe a higher ratio. See what it's doing? 
a kick hits and the bass gets compressed. This is the amount of compression applied to the bass. This is called pumping effect or ducking. Sometimes it works better. I bypass it. Changing the release and the attack obviously affects it all. This is very handy, especially if you want to keep your kick hitting in the same root note, in, in the same place as the, the bass. Or if you have a long kick or a long released bass. But um, I don't usually use it, but if you want to use it in your track, it might work. Depends on the kick and the bass that you're using. So I'll just go no effect, that removes it. I'm happy with that. So that's our kick and bass in our mixing section. We're gonna move on to percussion after this. So I'll see you then.